Hey there, it's Jordan. I am here in Cleveland on the steps of City Hall, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we've been here uh, since yesterday and we're just waiting actually for uh, some, some activists uh, and local officials here to hold a press conference. Obviously, we know about the Flint water crisis and the lead there, but there's lead problems in a lot of other cities, including Cleveland, that really most people don't know about. So there's going to be a press conference here behind me probably in the next few minutes. Uh, so Cleveland has had a uh, lead problem. But before we get to the lead, I should talk to you about Cleveland in general. Obviously, Ohio is a, is a swing state uh, in the uh, national election, but Cleveland actually has the highest level of childhood poverty in America. In 2018, it beat out Detroit, uh, which is obviously not a great distinction to rank number one in childhood poverty. I believe it was at, let me check to confirm, I believe it was at 48.7%. Uh, 48.7% uh, child poverty here in Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland, like most American cities you're starting to see, is becoming highly gentrified. Uh, you have a lot of development here in the downtown region, which has pushed a lot of working people out. Prices going up. You've also had in Ohio in general uh, a lot of economic struggle when it comes to jobs being offshored. We just did some interviews in Lordstown, Ohio, which is one of the plants, the General Motors plants, that they're closing down. Uh, they're closing down uh, five plants and they're going to be laying off nearly 15,000 people, uh, uh, 1,500 of which is from Lordstown, Ohio. But in Cleveland in specific, there is there has been a, a legacy lead problem. A lot of that lead problem comes from homes that haven't been kept up. You have old lead paint uh, in a lot of these homes where children are growing up. Uh, and a lot of these a lot of uh, a lot of these homes uh, with older uh, infrastructure that hasn't been updated, that hasn't had the lead paint removed, frankly, are in poorer communities, uh, heavier black populations. And last year, they found that 17 percent, 17 percent of children in Cleveland were found to have high lead levels. That number might seem very high, and it is 17 percent of children having high lead levels, but it's actually going down. At one point, the lead levels here in children were as high as 30 to 40 percent. 30, 30 to 40 percent of the children they were finding to have elevated lead levels. I don't need to explain to you what lead does to your body. It affects your brain. It affects your organs, especially in children, because your brain, your bones, your organs are still developing. So it is, there is no safe level of lead for anyone, really. But particularly in children, it could basically it could destroy your growth. Uh, we have seen in communities from Cleveland to Chicago to Detroit to other areas, high lead levels also, research has shown, are uh, linked to heavier crime because lead affects your mood, your behavior. So it is all connected. But the 17 percent level that I'm talking about that they found of kids is actually more alarming than just 17 percent because they haven't even tested the majority of children in Cleveland. As part of Medicaid, uh, these children are supposed to be tested, but they're not. Uh, the, the full amount of children here in Cleveland, which I'm sure these activists will be talking about during this press conference, have not been tested. So if you're already finding that 17 percent of children in a major American city have high lead levels, yet you haven't even tested the majority of them, what are the real lead levels here? Right. And also, why is this, you know, Trump today, Trump today, which means many people might not be watching this because everybody's focused on Trump. Trump declared a, a national emergency for a non-existent emergency. There is no emergency on the border wall. We know this. I don't want to I don't want to waste time talking about Trump. But he did a press conference. He announced a national emergency. Well, Flint is going on five years without clean water. 17 percent of children. 17 percent of children in Cleveland have elevated lead levels. And again, the majority have not been tested. We just came from Detroit where we interviewed people about the growing uh, water crisis there. 
they have extremely high lead levels in the water. And by the way, it isn't just lead in a lot of these city, cities. They're not testing for the full spectrum of bacteria. They're not testing for the full spectrum of PFAS. PFAS is a uh, cancer-causing chemical that, is being that has been found recently in many American water sources that causes cancer. It's a byproduct of the manufacturing of Teflon and other products. So it's not just lead. They're not even testing for full uh, contaminants because the EPA doesn't even have federal standards for a lot of these contaminants. So to me, I, I don't know how you wouldn't call this an emergency. I mean, if you're watching and you have children, wouldn't it be an emergency to you if you don't know if they're drinking lead? If you don't know if they're drinking cancer-causing chemicals, if you don't know if they're drinking bacteria, and every city's different. So in Flint, it might have been the lead servant, the lead pipes underground, and switching, switching to a toxic water source. Here, uh, it's it's heavily um, because of the lead paint and other uh, lead because they have not, they have not uh, really gone into a lot of these communities with old housing, but predominantly poorer communities because they're spending all their resources on gentrifying uh, and, and, you know, really building up downtown communities. I mean, if you go to major American cities, it's all the same story. You have a downtown region that's had billions and billions and billions of dollars uh, poured into for sports stadiums, restaurants, entertainment complexes, uh, you name it. And it's, it's pushing working people out of those downtown areas because the prices go up and it's becoming more and more of a tale of two cities, whether it's in Cleveland, whether it's in Chicago, Detroit, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, the list goes on, New York, the list goes on and on and on. So that's why we're here. It's an important topic. Uh, obviously, if we're going to connect this to the progressive movement, Nina Turner, the president of our revolution, uh, obviously was a surrogate for Bernie Sanders during the 2016 campaign. She was a state senator uh, in Ohio, and she's from Cuyah Cuyahoga County, which Cleveland, I believe, is part of. So this is a, a major, major issue uh, here in Cleveland, and that's why uh, I got in touch with uh, some of the local activists on the ground. And frankly, uh, I was just talking to one activist before I went live. The Democratic Party has been in charge here in Cleveland for many, many years. Uh, and now we have activists walking out here. Uh, the Democratic Party has been in charge in Cleveland for many, many years. So whose responsibility is this? Is, is, it, is it Donald Trump? Is it Democratic Party? Is it local officials? I mean, the bottom line is, and this isn't fear mongering, the bottom line is people don't know what their children are drinking and this is affecting young children's brains, their body, their behavior, and it has a ripple down effect for the rest of their lives. So we wanna thank everybody who's here. We have representative from all the organizations that make up Clash. This is our uh, official day that we're kicking off our petition drive. We are serious about the solutions that we feel that this proposal begins to bring to the city in the area of lead poisoning. While the other coalition that we want to work with is meeting and having subgroups and breakout sessions, we're going to break out into the community with our petitions. They are ready, they are here, and we want to send a message that we have to make the city lead safe and we have to raise the money with the private sector to bring everyone to the table so i'm excited we're going to go upstairs and we're going to talk with the um, council clerk and we're going to make sure that we get it certified and get moving and i'm going to pass it on to rebecca thanks thanks so much jeff it's so important that we not delay, and that's part of why we're here today. What we know from the statistics from the Ohio Department of Health is that every day, four children in the city of Cleveland test positive for elevated blood lead levels above what the CDC says is acceptable. And in the city relaunched and reaffirmed its commitment to lead safe housing on January 22nd. In that time, enough days have passed that 92 children, we believe, have tested positive for elevated blood lead levels since that time. We can't wait any longer. The city can't wait any longer. We hope to work with city council to take this bill, take it to committee, and have that open discussion about what is going to work for Cleveland. But we believe this bill is the correct place to start, and it's time for action on it. 
Oh, Steve, I apologize. I'm Steve Aleko with the Cuyahoga County Progressive Caucus. As Jeff and Rebecca have said, the time to act is now. The time for meetings, committees, and summits has long since passed. Today, we are beginning the process of allowing the citizens of the city of Cleveland to decide whether or not they want a lead safe ordinance soon. Whether they want that 92 number to go up or down. Or whether or not they want more meetings, committees, and summits. We will be returning here in a few weeks with the citizens of the city of Cleveland's answer to that question. When we deliver the petitions with enough signatures to get the initiative on the ballot. Our preference, however, is not to have to come back. Our preference is that the folks who are meeting soon at the Jerry Sue Thornton Center, the city leaders, the foundations, decide to look at our ordinance, decide to fast track it through Cleveland City Council so that our kids stop getting poisoned now. The time for action is now. Clash is taking action now. Milo, come on back. Thank you. My name is Milo Corman, and I'm here on behalf of the Cleveland chapter of the Democratic Socialists of America. For too long, the people of Cleveland have been told that real change is impossible. Politicians meet behind closed doors to shape the future of our city to benefit the rich and the powerful. Anyone who questions this arrangement is told that that's just how things work around here, and there's nothing that can be done. But standing here today is a group of people who are not content to accept the status quo. On the issue of lead poisoning, we are not content with more studies, more empty promises, and more of the same. To protect our babies, our homes must be lead safe. And we will not simply wait for our elected leaders to acknowledge this obvious truth. We will take to the streets, to the voters of the city, to exercise our electoral rights. We know that a better world will never be handed down by a powerful few, but must be demanded, fought for, and won by the organized voices of common people. Thank you. In 1963, when Dr. King wrote, Why We Can't Wait, after being challenged by a clergy that felt his call for civil rights could wait until a more opportune time, his message began with a plea to save our children from deplorable housing conditions. Today, we are challenged by the 17 legislators that failed to acknowledge our plea for not only civil, but human rights of families, particularly children, that can't speak for themselves. As parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends, we are here to let our legislators know that we have to create a cradle to life pipeline that enhances the lives of children in the city of Cleveland. We can't have a viable city that works for everyone when we continue to host summits, meetings, and avoid passing legislation that ends this lead crisis. As a community, we have sat on the sidelines for far too long. That's why we are here with clipboards, petitions, and pens saying to you why we can't wait. To the citizens in the city of Cleveland, we need you to volunteer, to donate, to sign the petition, and to help us. To the parents of poisoned children, please know that your babies matter. Join us as we take the health of our babies to the ballot. Sign the petition today.